In this example, we are going to apply node voltage method to a circuit containing a voltage controlled voltage source. In this given circuit, we have one ideal independent voltage source and this circuit component is the dependent source. We can see that we have a plus minus inside the symbol. So that means this is a dependent, a, a, a dependent voltage source and then the magnitude is in terms of another circuit voltage. So that means this component is a voltage control voltage source. So let's look at how we can use node voltage method to solve this circuit. First we need to identify essential nodes. This is where three or more circuit elements join together. And this circuit has two essential nodes which are indicated here. Note that this point, this point, this point and this point is an ordinary node because two circuit elements meet but it is not an essential node. Make one of the essential nodes a reference node and in this case we can ground this node and now we need to apply Kirchhoff current law to the remaining node. So let's label this as V1 and then we assume all branch currents are flowing away from the node. Let's write the Kirchhoff current law equation at this node. So the car branch current through the 5 ohm resistor is given by V1 minus 0 over 5. Next we need to do this branch current. So this is voltage at this side which is V1 minus voltage at this side. Note that the voltage here is not 65 volts because we have another resistor connected in series here. Similarly for this branch current we have voltage on this side minus voltage on this side and this voltage is not 3V delta because of this 15 ohm resistor connected here. In order to solve this problem we can exploit the fact that these three components are in series and these three components are also in series. So we can swap their order and then combine the series resistor to help us write the branch current equation. So we can redraw this side as follows. So starting with V1 and then I'm going to combine the two resistors in series. So we make it 10 ohm and then we have the voltage source going to ground. So the branch current here which is the same as the branch current here can now be written by applying Ohm's law to this resistor. So this branch current is V1 minus 65 over 10. Similarly, this branch current can be written by redrawing this part of the circuit as follows. So we have V1 and we combine the two resistors in series. So this gives 23 ohm and then we have the dependent source going to ground and this is 3V delta. So we can use this redrawn circuit to write the expression for this branch current. So this gives V1 minus 3V delta divided by 23 is equal to 0. <clears throat> In this circuit there is only one node so we only need to write KCL at one node. The next step is to write the dependent source constraint equation. What that means is we need to express this controlling variable V delta in terms of the node voltage V1. To do that let us write so V delta is the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor so let's say we have this current Ix and using the technique which we have seen here 
I can write I X as this will be let's assume for simplicity let's assume a, a different direction so let's say we write I X like this so then this I X will be 65 minus V1 over 10 and then I just need to apply Ohm's law to this resistor so that means V delta is equal to 4 times I X is equal to 4 times 65 minus V1 over 10 hence we have two equations with two unknowns V delta and V1 and these can be easily solved. We can use Mathematica to obtain the solution and using the Mathematica solve command the solution can be easily obtained as shown here. So the obtained solution is V1 is equal to 25 volts and V delta is equal to 16 volts. Now we can solve for the circuit variables and in this case we need to solve for the dependence, the power associated with the dependent source. In order to do that, let's find this branch current IY through the dependent source and using Ohm's law, this IY is given by V1 minus 3V delta over 23. And we can substitute values and uh, this gives 25 minus 3 times 16 over 23 and this gives minus 1 amp. Now the power associated with the voltage controlled voltage source is given by the product of the voltage and the current. So this is 3V delta the voltage times the current IY and we need to use the passive sign convention to decide the sign of the power calculation. In this case the current is entering the terminal marked with a plus sign so we use the power calculation with a plus sign and then substituting values we get 3 times 16 and minus 1 so this gives minus 48 watts. So this negative answer means that this voltage control voltage source is actually supplying power in this circuit. We can verify the solution by simulating the circuit in either P-SPICE or LT-SPICE. The LT-SPICE simulation is shown here. The voltage control voltage source is available as part name E within LT-SPICE and its configuration is pretty straightforward. So when we simulate this circuit, we get the DC operating point. And if I hover the cursor over the voltage control voltage source, in the bottom left corner, LT Spice confirms that the power dissipated is minus 48 watts. And in this case, the node voltage is 25 volts. So this confirms the solution. Yeah.